DIY plug-in solar. This is from Craftstrom Solar, and it just literally plugs into a 120 volt outlet and starts generating free electricity from the sun for your house. However, there's a problem with that when it comes to shared versus dedicated circuits. I explain the shared circuit versus dedicated circuit comparison very well in that video, so I'm gonna insert a clip of that right here. This is an example of a shared circuit where we have a 15 amp breaker with 14 gauge wire. That's a very common size circuit here in the United States. That means this circuit has a maximum of 1,800 watts that it can handle. And that's what the breaker is rated for before it will trip. And the reason we have breakers is so that uh, the wires do not heat up and cause a fire. The breaker will shut off and prevent any more electricity from flowing in the wires, therefore allowing them to cool off and not continue to heat up and potentially cause a fire. So here's the problem. The microinverter can produce up to 1,200 watts. For easy math, let's just say that it's going to produce 1,000 watts for this scenario. So 1,000 watts is coming in to this outlet right here, and electricity is just like water. It will flow in the path of least resistance. And so from this side here, we've got the grid power uh, pushing ever so slightly. Let's say this load is 2,500 watts, and you don't realize that it takes that much power. Well, what's gonna happen is the uh, power from the microinverter is gonna come in, and because this is the same circuit, it's going to come and feed this. So we've got a thousand watts. It's not going to be able to power the full 2,500 watts. So from the grid right here, it will make up the difference and provide 1,500. But now something interesting happens. On this little wire right here, between where the microinverter power comes in and where the power to the heavy load is going, those wires right there are going to be carrying 2,500 watts. That is substantially more than the 1800 watts that the wire is rated for as well as the breaker. But guess what? The breaker is not going to trip because it is only seeing 1500 watts going through it and it has no idea that there's an additional 1000 watts getting fed in midway during the circuit. And so now all of a sudden this wire is going to melt, get hot, start a fire, something. And that's why it is very dangerous to overload a shared circuit. So now we've got the dedicated circuits. We have our breaker panel right here, and each of these breakers are tying into the bus bar inside that breaker panel that can handle significant quantities of electricity. So we still have a 15 amp breaker, we still have a 14 gauge wire at both of these breakers. Once again, they're rated for 1,800 watts and 1,800 watts. Let's say our microinverter is producing 1,000 watts again. That power is simply going to come in through these wires and down into the breaker panel bus bar. There is no other outlets or anything along this pathway. It's a dedicated circuit and 1,000 watts is plenty under the 1,800 watt rated limit of 14 gauge wire. Then what happens, let's say you plug in your 2,500 watt load right here, and it turns on. Well, because now there's no additional power getting fed in along the middle of the wiring here, the breaker can now see that this 2,500 watts is more than it's rated for, and the breaker will trip and cut the power to that load, thus protecting this wiring. And so you completely eliminate the risk of any kind of hot wires or melting or fire or anything because now the circuit breaker can do its job that it was designed to do. Hopefully that was in depth enough to grasp the concept, but not so deep that it was over your heads. Now my solar is plugging into a shared circuit right here. So I need a way to protect the wiring so that I do not overload it. And Craftstrom has solved that with this device right here. This is what's what they call their smart NEC breaker. And it can actually detect when you put a heavy load, say like the space heater on the same circuit, and this will automatically turn your solar power off so you can get the protection on this circuit without derating your solar. It's very cool and it's a very simple device. It literally just plugs in right here and then your solar, which is my green cable right here, plugs into the front of it. So let's go ahead and plug it into this uh, strip right here and you can see we have this uh, light that's glowing here around that button. So that means uh, the breaker is on and allowing power to flow through it. 
Now I've plugged this space heater in. I've got a little watt meter on here so you can see and it's plugged in. We'll just follow this yellow cord to the other outlet that it is shared with. I have multiple outdoor outlets on the same circuit. So the goal is to set that breaker up so that it will automatically trip if someone plugs in an additional heavy load to the circuit. Okay so to calibrate this uh, smart breaker on the bottom side here, we've got four dip switches, and they're labeled one, two, three, four. And there are a total of 16 sensitivity modes that, that you can pick from, depending on your particular circuits. And the way to configure those different modes is to put the switches, the dip switches, into different positions. Now you've got to do kind of trial and error for your particular setup uh, to see what is good and what isn't. So I've got uh, this electric space heater plugged into this watt meter just so I can see how many watts it pulls. And then we'll try different uh, configurations on this smart breaker and see which one uh, we want to go with. My thought is because I have the potential of feeding about 800 watts of solar into this. That's my max. And this is a 15 amp circuit. It's not a 20 amp circuit. It's kind of an older house. So the maximum continuous load I can have is 1800 watts. So I'm thinking that if I can have this trip off whenever something 800 to 900 watts plugs in, that should keep me safe because I'll never have more than 800 watts, at least for now, feeding in through this breaker. In the instruction manual here, you can see that the switches being down are on the on position and up is in the off position. And the breaker shipped to me with all the breakers in the on position. So based on that, that means that I'm in mode 16, which I believe is the most sensitive. Let's see, I'm gonna turn this fan on. We'll just watch that light, it's supposed to go out. I just turned this to fan, so when I turn this to heat, in theory, we should see that trip off. Let's try it. Okay, nothing's happened. It's still on. Let's put more heat on. Still on. So maybe I'm in the least sensitive mode. Because if you look, I'm pulling like 1400-ish watts. So I think I need to change this from mode 16 to a different mode. So just for fun, I slid all the dip switches up, which is mode 1. And it actually already tripped. <laughs> so let's see if we can reset it. You reset it by pushing and holding for 4 seconds. I don't know if you heard that, uh, but it will not turn on. Mode 1 appears to be the most sensitive, and Mode 16 seems to be the least sensitive. So now I'm going to try to go right in the middle. Let's go to Mode 8. We'll just go process of elimination here. So Mode 8 has all the switches on except for Switch 1, which should be that configuration right there. So let's see if this will reset now. All right, let's apply a little load here. The fan only is only pulling about 23 watts. We're still on. Uh, mode 1 here should uh, give us something close to 8-ish hundred. Let's see. So the breaker's still on, at least at the moment. And we're pulling 900, almost 1,000 watts. And the breaker's still on, so that's good. Let's go ahead and turn it up now and see if we trip it. Nope. So mode 8 is still not uh, sensitive enough for me. Mode 1 was too sensitive, so we got to go somewhere between 1 and 8. So let's do mode 4. That is switch 3 and 4 on, switch 1 and 2 off. And just like that. So now we should uh, turn this on and see if we trip it. We aren't tripping it uh, on heat level 1. Let's do number 2. And no, we are not tripping off on that yet. So again, it's just process of elimination. So we were on four, so now we're gonna go to two. So that's switch one, two, and three off, and four is the only one on. Just like that, right there. Nothing's happened on heat level one. Let's try heat level two. And nothing is happening on heat level two. Well, let's try uh, mode number one again, uh, because I think I may have accidentally actually had this on heat when I was testing it last time. So mode number one, all the dip switches are in the off position, applying stage one heat. Oh, look at that. The second I turn that on, it dripped off. That is so sweet. And you cannot, you cannot reset that while the heat is on. But as soon as I turn it off, push and hold for four seconds. Look at that, we're back on. So let's just uh, look at this watt meter here. All right, turning the heat on to low heat, three, two, one immediately tripped off. This uh, takes a minute to uh, 
register, but uh, there's my 900 watt uh, range and it's going to settle down as the heater warms up. But uh, that seems to be just about perfect for this. So how the smart breaker works is it's constantly sampling the voltage on the circuit. When you plug in additional loads, they actually have an effect on the voltage of any given circuit. And so this can detect that and that's what causes it to trip. Now, my understanding from uh, talking to the people over at uh, Craftsroom is that this is sensitive enough that uh, if a heavy load like say your air conditioner or something turns on, potentially it could influence this and cause it to trip in kind of a phantom way, even though it's not necessarily on the same circuit. So there's gonna need to be a little bit of trial and error. I'm gonna leave links to this down in the description below. It's on Craftstrom's individual components page where you can buy any of the components that you need separately. And this is one of those accessories you have to get separately so they don't come in just any of the kit, all of the kits and stuff, because some people may have dedicated circuits and not shared circuits. It's definitely a must have for anyone that has a shared circuit. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hype. The five free things that really benefit my channel. Small channels are having a rough go right now on YouTube. And uh, the more you guys can do those five free things, the better. Because I really want to keep bringing this epic content to you. I sure appreciate it. Stay safe, and we'll catch y'all next time.